Welcome back. In this presentation, we're going to look at orders of reaction and the rate equation. So before we begin, a reminder as to why the concentration has an effect on the rate of reaction. If there is a greater concentration, there are more particles, and so there is an increased frequency of collision. There's just more stuff colliding, and there's a greater likelihood that those collisions would have enough energy for a successful reaction to occur. But what is the mathematical relationship between the concentration and the rate of reaction? Well, we can express that mathematical relationship with this. This is a rate equation. And it was first considered and first written down by chemists Cato, Maximilian Goldberg and Peter Vage in 1864. The basics behind the idea is the proportionality. We understand that the rate is proportional to the concentration to some power. But what power? Well, reaction to reaction, the actual power may change. So let's look at them one at a time. In this rate equation, the rate is proportional to the concentration of A to the power of zero. That makes it a zero order reaction. But what does that mean? It means that, well, anything to the power of zero is equal to the number one. It means the rate is proportional to one. It means the rate is not proportional to the concentration at all. In fact, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how concentrated A is, the rate will be independent of that. Now, that's not actually very likely, but there are some reactions that are completely concentration independent. A really good example of that is ammonia. Now, when ammonia is put on a platinum surface at a reasonably high temperature, what will happen is it will decompose into the ingredients of ammonia, which are nitrogen and hydrogen. And it does not matter. That rate of reaction is not dependent on the concentration at all. And so we would describe this as a zero order reaction. So how about this one? The rate of reaction is proportional to the concentration of A to the power 1. What does that mean? It means that they're directly proportional, that the rate is proportional to the concentration of A. The more concentrated A is, the higher the rate. And so a lot of reactions are directly proportional on the concentration of the substances that are involved. Now, uh, it also means that if you double the concentration of A, it means that you double the rate of reaction. It works that way around. Now, a very good example is uh, what happens to hydrogen peroxide. Now, hydrogen peroxide will, if you give it long enough in the bottle, eventually decompose into water and oxygen. Uh, this is also the reaction that you might uh, experiment with by adding the, the catalyst catalase. Uh, it's present in, in all, um, in cells basically, to stop the highly oxidizing hydrogen peroxide causing havoc. Uh, all cells are equipped with a body armor of some catalase to protect those cells so that it gets uh, basically decomposing it down into harmless water and harmless oxygen. Uh, this is one of those chemical reactions where the concentration of hydrogen peroxide directly determines the rate of reaction as one halves the other one will decrease by the same amount. Now take a look at this one. The rate equation shows that the rate of reaction is proportional to the concentration of A squared. Now that means it's no longer directly proportional. Doubling one won't double the other. So how does this work? Well, it means that no matter what the concentration is multiplied by, the rate will be multiplied by that number squared. So if the concentration is doubled, then the rate of reaction is uh, multiplied by two squared, which is four. So doubling the concentration quadruples the rate of reaction. Now, a good example of this is when we oxidize uh, nitrogen uh, oxide and basically get nitrogen dioxide. Uh, this is a very horrible smelly gas, uh, but basically this works in that sort of relationship. That the rate of reaction when you mix these two chemicals together is proportional to the concentration of the nitrogen oxide squared. Now, most reactions require you to mix two reactants together to form the reaction to take place. Now, the rate of reaction there is probably going to be related to the concentration of both of those reactants. 
So how do we adjust our rate equation to take into account the fact that there are two reactants contributing? Well, if the rate of reaction is proportional to, let's call it the concentration of chemical A, and it is also proportional to the concentration of chemical B, then what you can see is we can actually write a rate equation with both of these here. We say the rate is proportional to the concentration of A to whatever power that is to, M in this case, multiplied by the concentration of B to whatever power that exists to, which we've called N. Now, the overall order of this reaction uh, is equal to those indices added together. So M plus N would give you the order of the reaction. So bottom line there, if the rate was proportional to A to the power of 1 multiplied by B to the power of 2, the overall order would be 1 plus 2, which means the overall order of that reaction would be 3. Now, that's important for the next step. Now, with any kind of proportionality, we may say that the rate is proportional to the concentration of A to the power of 1, for example. But we can actually work out something called the constant of proportionality. To move it from being that this is proportional to that, it is that this is equal to that when we multiply it by this constant. And we normally, in mathematics, use the symbol K to represent the constant of proportionality. Now, this is something that we can find, and in the next uh, presentation, you'll see working with data to actually find the value of k. But you can see where it appears inside the rate equation. Rather than say that the rate is proportional to the concentration of a to the power of m, we're actually saying that rate is equal to the, uh, the rate constant multiplied by the concentration of a to the power of m. It means that we can find the constant of proportionality, this rate constant, by taking the rate and dividing it by the concentration of A to the power of M. That is what we'll do with real data in the next presentation. So we can find a numerical value for the rate constant K. But before we do that, we need to look at what the units of K would be. If we were to express what K was, then we would need to give the unit. But that very much depends upon um, what order of reaction uh, it is. So if we take a look, for example, at a zero order reaction where K is equal to the rate divided by the concentration of A to the power of zero, anything to the power of zero is one. So basically, we would take the units of rate, which is the moles per decimeter cubed per second, and divide it by one. So if it is a zero order reaction, we would find that the units of the rate constant are just the same as the units of rate. It's moles per decimeter cubed per second. Now, things change when we look at a first order reaction. You can see that the rate constant K is equal to the rate divided by the concentration of A to the power of 1. Now, that means we've got the uh, units of K are going to be equivalent to, first of all, the units of rate, moles per decimeter cubed per second, divided by the units of concentration, which is moles per decimeter cubed. And so what you can see is the numerator and the denominator both have moles per decimeter cubed on them. And so that cancels out, leaving the units overall to be just seconds to the minus one. That's quite a different unit. So we must make sure that we get it right. If it's second order, same treatment. The rate constant K is equal to the rate divided by the concentration of A squared in this case which means on that top line of the unit, we've got the units of rate moles per decimeter cubed per second divided by two sets of the unit for concentration. We've got the moles per decimeter cubed multiplied by the moles per decimeter cubed. And that means that when we look at them all and we realize that there's a moles per decimeter cubed on the top and at the bottom, it leaves a second to the minus one on the numerator and a moles per decimeter cubed on the denominator. So the uh, moles uh, in the denominator becomes moles to the minus one. The per decimeter cubed on the denominator is now one divided by that. So it's no longer per decimeter cubed, but decimeter cubed. And the seconds to the minus one was on the numerator. So that stays the same. It becomes moles to the minus one decimeters cubed seconds to the minus one.
Now this only starts to get complicated when our rate equation contains a dependence on the concentration of more than one chemical. So if the rate was equal to the uh, rate constant multiplied by the concentration of A to the power of M multiplied by the concentration of B to the power of N, then what we know is that the rate constant is just going to be the rate divided by the concentration of A to the power of M multiplied by the concentration of B to the power of N. Basically treat it the same, but just make sure that that whole term that expresses the relationship of concentrations uh, is on the denominator line and then process it exactly the same. So if k is given by, and here's a nice example where the rate is divided by a squared uh, multiplied by b to the power 1, then it means that on the numerator line of the unit we've got the units of rate, which are moles per decimeter cubed, seconds to the minus 1, and then on the denominator line we've got three sets of concentrations. Concentration, times concentration times concentration and that is because the order of this uh, is actually third order because we've got uh, the concentration of a to the power of two the concentration of b to the power of one that's three sets of concentrations multiplied together on the denominator line so you're dividing the numerator by moles per decimeter cubed multiplied by moles per decimeter cubed multiplied by moles per decimeter cubed and when you cancel out everything on the numerator and the denominator line, you end up with moles to the minus two, decimeters to the six, and seconds to the minus one. Because basically what we're treating is everything in that rate equation, we're basically treating it as a third order. So we're replacing the concentration of a squared multiplied by the concentration of b to the power of one as just the concentration of x to the power of three. We've added those indices. Now one final little detail here is that when uh, we are given units, we tend to give the numbers that are um, positive before we give the numbers that are negative. There's nothing wrong at all. It's mathematically equivalent to say moles to the minus two, decimeters to the six, seconds to the minus one. But the convention is, is to list those positive numbers first. So the convention would be to have it listed as decimeters to the six, moles to the minus two, seconds to the minus one in the next presentation. We're going to look at putting some numbers into this formula and representing it graphically. But until then, why don't you try these questions?